Salute and thank you, Nerd Soul. Yeah, that's right. Lay ill kid at one youngster holding it down, bringing that street geek and nerd soul. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Let's go, man. We going back to that middle earth, y'all. That's right. We all in the middle of the earth. And we ain't by ourselves. See, last time we had Jay, we're going to get Jay and this man together. But we have the cinematic sorcerer, Solar Gray. What's up? Hello, everyone. I am Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, coming at you from the Wizard's Tower. And I guess I'm the lore guy. <laughs> uh, Jay said he has to always text his brother and stuff. And I'm like, oh, man, I have to, I have to wait to interrogate <laughs> <laughs> the cinematic sorcerer. So um, I guess I'll start off because since you didn't review the episode with us, I'll start off and just say, oh, let well, me know. with that, with mm -hmm. that, um, before we really, really get started, I got a redaction. Okay, a redaction. Because, oh. uh, yeah, redaction, you know, because one of our commenters, I'm trying to pull him up real quick, actually gave me a real good correction. And I was very happy about that. Um, I named the wrong deity or the incorrect deity as far as who made the dwarves and when. Okay. And one of our fantastic listeners was like, yo, man, it was Aule. All right, Ale made made the dwarves, and he did it ahead of schedule. So Alu Iluvatar or Iru Iluvatar was like, "Nah, you got to put those guys to sleep because I ain't made the elves yet." And yeah, so you know, I did a little misnomer last week, and I know y'all look at me to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. So yeah, I just want to um I want to put that out there and give a shout out to the dude who corrected me on that one because it it, it was it, it was cool because I can't quite find the name yet. Uh, his but name he's like, was I don't want to uh, Zoro fifteen or Zoro, sorry Zoro forty five. Yeah, Zoro because he's like I don't I, I don't want to I, I don't want to be that guy. I'm like no nah, man, be that guy. Be it's that like, guy. Yeah, there's, there's, as long as you're not coming with like arrogance and stuff, there's nothing wrong with letting us know like what happened. We need, you know, or at yeah. least oh, I yeah. need to know. You know. Yeah, and Mome914. That's who it was. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, because, you know, hey, you know, it, it's only in recent years that Blurds have been able to come out in public and let our nerd flag fly. <laughs> so, again, all love, all love. And if I get something wrong, bro, let me know. You know, so yeah, I, I, I want to give a redaction and a shout out, you know, and a thank you for helping keeping me on my P's and Q's because, you know, sometimes we're doing these, um, we're doing these podcasts and I'm a little tired, you know, <laughs> and cool, cool. like I said, the Silmarillion and the Lost Tales kind of read like the Bible. Ah, uh, got you, got you. You know, so yeah, yeah. So what uh, you were saying? Uh, uh, so yeah, I miss the I miss the episode with us, review. Yeah, uh, I guess going to give us a quick review or thoughts or how are you feeling about uh, the episode before I start questioning you. Uh, so real talk, favorite episode yet? Okay, okay. Favorite episode. I love this episode. A lot of people are mad about the series as a whole. Really? And I'm just like, oh well, yeah. See, I've I've disengaged from any kind of fandom regarding lord of the rings you know star wars any of that i just watch it and don't even deal with that so I, i'm not I, I am but you understand why um bro i'm old all right <laughs> i'm an old man and being an old man um i have a very controversial hot take which is yes i am generation x and we we essentially quiz people to see if they can get their black belt in snark and cynicism. But I kind of want to spend the second half of my life liking things. <laughs> and I'm just like, that yeah, would be nice. I, I like this. <laughs> this is kind of cool. Is it what I imagined? No. Is it better than anything I can produce? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Just because I know how to do something don't mean I'm good at it. So I'm happy we got the um, thing out there And I like the show And this episode was my favorite episode so far 
Nice, nice. All right. So what about this episode stood out to you as far as, you know, what made it the best? The hard choices. Mm. Because you got Elrond turning into the Elrond that I know. That's straight up like, yeah, yeah, she might have been right, but she wasn't. She wasn't sacrificing herself. Don't get it twisted. Okay. She's trying to save this ring because in her head, it's just all ring. Ring, 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 ring. And I'm like, you know, Elrond, <laughs> like, ring, ring, you sound like ring, you're ring, more ring, ring. obsessed with this ring than Galadriel or Gilgalad. You know, I'm just putting it out there. Ever since these things were made, you've been like, ring, 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 angry about the ring, you know? Well, because he knows he's once he realized that Sauron was involved, that's what kicked everything off for him. Mm hmm. And I mean, I guess, you know, rightfully so. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You didn't tell me that <laughs> Sauron was involved with these rings. We have to recall all of this. This this E. coli in these rings, all right? <laughs> Got to recall everything. I like the way you put that. <laughs> but I did. I, I will agree that Elrond is changing from the kind of happy-go-lucky guy we knew in the first season. Yep. Because in the first season, I was like, hey, man. I was like, I thought Elrond was whack. I like this guy. But of course, they say this is supposed to be set like thousands of years before me. So, you know, I mean, hey, time changes, people. Exactly. You know, they're all younger and happier and stuff like that. And I think back to myself from the 80s and 90s, and I'm like, I was a happier person back then. (laughs) <laughs> it's like i was happier yes that is true but uh the hmm trying to think what might be the best um well you got questions yes but i but i don't want to I, I want you to be able to basically break down any stuff of the episode that you enjoyed you know, um I wanna... so i really enjoyed um the performance of gilgalad actually like mm. I, I put this out there you your viewers know it my viewers know it i am not a big fan of the elves okay but there are a few elves from tolkien that i like and a few that i respect mm-hmm. and gilgalad was always one that i respected okay okay so i thought that i thought that was very good um this episode specifically has been answering a lot of questions that i had a hard time visualizing while reading the books and i was kind of happy with that um specifically okay you want me to get into the meat and potatoes yes what did the dwarven rings do to the dwarves yeah we know that three for the elves for the for the elf elven kings you know seven for the dwarf lords okay um so by the third age or by the movie or the original books you know um they never talked about the the dwarfish rings and um and i'm kind of i i've spent a long time wondering all right well what did the dwarven rings do? Where did they go? And why we heard about this by the third age? Yeah, because you know? for someone, um, someone like myself, who's I've only watched the movies and this TV show. So for someone who came in, like I'm at, say, you know, I'm sitting in the theater when Fellowship of the Ring is going on. I'm thinking there's just one ring. Oh no, there are twenty. <laughs> yeah, but I'm thinking there's just one ring. It's like, hey, there's there's just one ring. There's you know, I, the, the the fellowship of the ring, you know, the singular. So I'm thinking, oh, there's one ring. It isn't until maybe like the middle of the second movie or something. I'm like, hold on, there's like more rings. Oh, well, the middle of the first when Galadriel is like, oh yeah, 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 because she had one, the yeah. ring of adamant, you know. So when she had, when she, I was like, hold on, there's more. So why? I'm, I, w- I was lost at that moment. I was like, this looks cool. And I mean, I would, 
you know, cut out a lot of this walking and get to more of the fighting. But <laughs> I like this looks cool. I like what's going on. But y'all had me thinking it was just one ring. And if y'all got more rings, why don't y'all just use those other rings to gang up on this ring and then everything will be all right. And then, but, the I mean, of course, they're like, they're like, it, you like, can't have a story like that. <laughs> Well, not to mention, they can't use all the rings to gang up on the one ring because the one ring is the master ring. Uh, yeah, I forgot. One ring to rule them all. So, yeah. Uh huh. Um, but uh, I guess, okay. So, I'll, I'll make some statements and mm -hmm. I want you to check me on those statements if, you know, in this interrogation time slash clarify, clarification time. So you watch the show at 7 p.m. <laughs> so you watched it at 7.05 p.m. Oh, you know, you done messed up, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so now that I've watched this episode, because one thing that I really loved about this was everything at Kaza Doom. Mm. And it seems to me like Sauron's plan is for these rings to just create general chaos because in my opinion there's no way he can know everything that's going to happen right but he knows bad things in general will happen so i'm thinking that he's thinking if bad things are happening and chaos is going on and disorganization that'll leave everything like in a, a weakened state where i can just take power you're not off entirely but you ain't on all right okay because i'm, um, I'm thinking there's no way he can know what people are going to do with these rings they might get these rings and be completely altruistic and you know um, awesome folks well actually that is where you're off okay okay he knows that he sauron is creating the rings to corrupt the wearers and the corruption is what is your worst trait? Okay. Really? Let, okay, let's go on that. So, essentially, the dwar uh the dwarves, they can be greedy. All right? That that's what they're doing. So, he made the rings essentially, let me give you the power to do what you need to do to save yourself. And now that you got that power, let's take that same power and apply it to the worst aspect of your personality. All right. So I get what you're saying. So if these rings corrupt the wearer, no matter what, then it's a slam dunk to put it in the hands of all these essentially ambassadors and dignitaries. Um, not ambassadors and dignitaries. Kings. Well, yeah, sorry. Kings, but you, know, you know what I mean? Kind of like in, in today's you know in today's version it would be like you know the the presidents and stuff like that yeah it, essentially the rulers like let me let me give the most powerful people in their societies aspect to power to do whatever it is they feel they gotta do and along with that power we just gonna sprinkle a little crack on it <laughs> and so we gonna we just gonna sprinkle just just a little bit you know he he's essentially He's essentially giving them hyped up coffee mm -hmm. and then spring a little crack in it. And when, so when I, when I saw the scene where Disa, uh, she chases the, um, the tuning uh, stone. The, yeah. Uh, so she chases the tuning stone downstairs and we hear the, the big growl or whatever. And that, Plus the digging, I was like, I was like, ah, that's what he's trying to do. He trying to wake up the Balrog. Um, uh, either the Balrog or the Watcher in the water. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Because see, I just assumed it was a Balrog because he's in the trailer. But you're right. Or I guess she. I guess a Balrog doesn't have to be whatever. But you know what I mean. Whatever it is. Yeah. He because it looks like a dude, but you know, like a dude with horns. Well, so <laughs> his name is or its name is the Flame of Udun. And okay. essentially, it's Sauron knows that there are two places that the gods use as a trash can. Mm. Technically three. All right. There is the ocean. 
the bowels of the earth and the darkness itself. Okay. Melkor is in the darkness itself. All right. All right. But everything else, yeah, ocean and deep underground. Um, during the first age, when the great big war with the dragons and Melkor and all the other Valar and stuff, yeah, they got struck down and thrown into the deep places of the earth. And right. Melkor himself was put in the darkness. All right. And I don't mean the band, nor am I talking Charlie Murphy. <laughs> so the we have Disa say, you know, you know, Aule gave the paraphrasing sort of like gave the singers the the ability to be able to like find the the best spots and the and the correct spots on the mountain and everything. And she was like, right. this feels like cheating. And when we see the scene of him, uh, him meaning uh, 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 during the third, saying, "Hey, why, where, why are these restrictions to dig right here?" and he's like you put them here because it's, it's yeah. dangerous to dig. he's like well scratch that we're gonna dig deeper and deeper and i was like ah i was like yep sauron got you boy it's because exactly what you're going to do is you're going to dig down there and then all of a sudden you're going to hear noise and it's going to be over all right and y'all ain't got gandalf right now so y'all just I, I think we're in store for a whole bunch of dead dwarves oh yeah because we already knows what happens to the dwarves of Khazad Doom. Oh, we do. Uh, we I do. Know. We found that out in the Fellowship. Man, see, I drums in the dark. Again. Like I said, basically, I know what's in the movies and what I haven't forgot. Yeah, drums in the dark. They are coming. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So, all right. So, since we're on the dwarves. Thorin is Thorin any relation or any kin to Durin? Um, descendant. All right, cool. Cause you know Thorin was I. He was I. You know he, he had to come around. No, he wasn't. He, he, he was I. <laughs> Thorin was a jerk. <laughs> Thorin, he, he, he just had to come around, man. I liked him. I, you know, he had to come around. Just, yeah. You know, he, the you know, movie he made him out to be a little less jerky, but he was a jerk. I mean, yeah, he was he wasn't he had to, he just had to come around. He wasn't too bad. Now, in his defense, he did get dragon sickness. Okay, so I, I will Oh yeah. Why do you think he went crazy once they got into the um into um in, into the area and in, into the into those mines? Okay. You know, he's All like, right. yeah, no, we got our... All right, I'm back. I got my people's treasure hoard. And yeah, no, forget the old treaties. Forget the deals. Forget the promises I made on my way here. This is mine. <laughs> yeah, that's dragon sickness. Oh, boy. Yeah, I forgot that part. The only thing I can really remember from The Hobbit very vividly is... What was it? The elf that was on the on the on the like the deer or whatever he was he that dude was getting on my nerves the uh you mean legolas's daddy thrandir yeah thrandir Th man look that dude he gotta go i he get, he be getting on my nerves look, he's indicative of elves that's why i don't like elves <laughs> <laughs> but um all right so then my next question is when it comes to the corruption of the rings mm -hmm. we have these great scenes between sauron and um uh Celebrimbor, and Celebrimbor, yeah over and over did Celebrimbor really i guess contaminate or whatever the rings or was that something that sauron already did anyway and just kind of threw it on him since he lied about it um we saw it you just didn't know what you were looking at okay okay um notice how when elrond first started going oh no wait sauron did nah 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 we got to recall all these and it's like okay. but Celebrimbor made him did sauron touch him well we we're not sure uh-huh yeah call him back <laughs> okay all sauron has to do is put his hands on them and we saw uh, okay, and they okay. and they made it a very 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 
clear shot in the third episode when they were making the uh or not the third the fifth episode when they made Durin's ring to watch Sauron grab the materials with his hands and put it into the forge Celebrimbor grabbed out the materials and then Sauron grabbed the materials and said okay cool we got this now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drop it into the forge with my bare hands and we we already see that corruption happening with Durin already uh huh and we already see it even his son you know uh fourth is basically like hey dad look i don't think these things something ain't right you know we shouldn't mess with these no more kind of thing and his dad's like so you want to be crown prince again <laughs> yeah uh, you know i was like uh i mean yeah sure but you do hear me about the rings right oh yeah yeah no 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 you know i can see the stone i can see the stone son with my eyes I don't need to keep I don't need your wife to keep working. I can see. Mm. Yeah, it this season has a awesome slow corruption of how these rings work. I, I love this. I love this season. It's been doing a very good job. I mean, of course, there's lore questions I have, but yes. Oh, hit me. We got time. You know, with this, this is something that I really dig. So, um, what is his name? Uh, Gilgalad. So we yeah. see Gilgalad when he is reading Celebrimbor's letter. Mm -hmm. Are we, t at least what I got from that scene, he doesn't believe that letter, right? Right. Okay. So he, he knows that it's a lie. Or at it, least. And it weighs on him. It weighs heavily on his heart. Because <laughs> see, Celebrimbor is kind of in a lose-lose situation. Yeah. Because he's know. already made this, the dwarf rings. And he can't, like, go get them back. I mean, I guess technically... Sorry, I meant Gilgalad. Oh, Gilgalad sorry. is in a lose-lose situation as king. Okay. Because what do you do? Um, Your people need you to make the right decision. All right. And the decision is, do we let the trees die, move on with the rest of our existence and have faith enough that the planet won't end without me? Or, <laughs> or do I take a little bit of this power and, um, and try and hold out because my whole purpose and this was the biggest thing the elves were made by Eru Iluvatar himself to safeguard the planet until their time was done until it was time to pass the torch to people like that that's their whole purpose that is why they exist all right so and so he's stuck as the king going what's the right i think i did the right thing for my people all right okay then so now he's got this ring that by the way isn't corrupt <laughs> okay so you know. his ring isn't yeah because the elf rings aren't corrupt right no but they are plugged they will be plugged into the one ring when it's built okay now that's why the elves were leaving in the movies Okay, then next uh, next question about the ring. Mm -hmm. The ring that the girl had at the forge, the the one that she was invisible. Yeah. That was Frodo's ring, right? Nope. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Uh, all right. No, not at all. <laughs> um, because Sauron doesn't make the one ring until the other 19 rings are made and distributed. Oh, okay, okay. So it's, all right, so I make the rings and they gonna pull a little bit of corruption, little bit here, little bit there, and it's gonna weaken their defenses. And now 
that their defenses are weakened. Now I'm going to make the one ring and control everybody. Then. All right. Then what ring is that? Or is that just a ring that just gets discarded? Is there a tech? Is there technically? No, that was one of the rings? dwarven rings. That was one of the dwarven rings. Um, it was? I thought that ring, I thought they already had the rings at that point. I must have misremembered. So yeah, but one of the big things, and this is a huge part of the Lotar lore um community. Okay. We only know two things. No, three mm -hmm. things that the one ring actually does. All right. Because Lord of the Rings is written on what's called a soft magic system. Okay. Soft magic is, was that magic? Um, versus a hard magic system that has rules and come with lots of special effects. <laughs> no, no joking. No joking. Nah, uh, nah, well, you say lots of special effects. Okay. Um, the hard magic. You see a little bit of hard magic in Lord of the Rings, but not a lot. Okay. Um, such as the four spells that Gandalf actually casts, and they don't seem like a whole lot. Okay. Spell number one, um, in D and D terms, thaumaturgy. Okay. The very first spell that we see, actually, the very first spell that we see him cast is the fireworks thing. When he's riding, um, when he rolls into town, mm -hmm. and the kids look at him, and he's like, "No, I'm not. I'm not here to cause any trouble. I'm not trying to disturb the peace or anything like that." And then the fireworks go off in his cart. Yeah, that was a spell. All right, but um, spell number two, light. <laughs> Let's. Oh uh, no, sorry. Spell number two, thaumaturgy. Um. And you might know it as Baggins, do not take me for some conjurer of cheap tricks. Uh, I am okay. not trying to rob you. Can't do the spell. I'm trying to help you. You know, <laughs> that was straight up. That was hard magic. You know, he grew two and a half feet tall. He got some bass in his voice. You know, you can pretty much call that spell. Um, you going to swing at your dad or what? Okay, or as okay. we did in my house, boy, you better. Okay, so, um, but outside of that, like my favorite spell that he cast in the entire trilogy was "Hearken to Me," where he was like, "I'm gonna release you, Theoden, from this whole thing." And Saruman was like, "Ah, you think that'll work here? You ain't got no power here." And he's like, "Hearken to me," <laughs> and everybody stopped, and all eyes were on Gandalf. That was a straight up spell. Okay, okay. You know, so I, I point that out there not to gush on Gandalf like I always do, but to show the difference between the magics. Okay, so since um, the whole system works on a soft magic system, there are debates, intellectual debates about what the ring actually does. What we know is that it turns small people invisible because of um bilbo frodo Gollum. yeah that's about it oh and isildur okay um we know it turns folks invisible we know that it shrinks and grows to fit whoever claims it it's called size according to uh to its stature okay okay we know it's indestructible except for in the fires of Mount Doom. <clears throat> Great. And we know that it can bend people's will to the wheel, will of the word bearer. And this is big. This is really big because it's the most subtle of all of them. All right. And what is a word bearer? Uh, sorry, not the word, the ring bearer. Oh, okay. All right. So essentially, if you're holding Sauron's ring, you pretty much have word magic. Okay. 
in the book, um, in the book, Gollum had his moment and Frodo was like, you know, the next time you try and take this, you will be thrown into the fire yourself. He straight said that while wearing the ring. And we all know how the book ended. Mm -mm -mm. When Sam got it, he became Samwise the Strong. And it projected his will onto um, the orcs. But he didn't know that that was how it worked and he didn't know that's how he was doing it. So, you know the scene where he rescues Frodo and he walks up the um walks up the stairs and you see his shadow is a big guy and he's growling in the way that only sean austin can oh, yeah boy. It, that worked because he had the ring ah okay okay cool essentially it makes people afraid of you if you I... want them to be afraid of you if you want them to trust you it makes them trust you nice all right then i guess the i guess the last question i have is about uh numenor with um uh, <laughs> oh boy with Bar uh, barazon barazon and muriel mm -hmm. so she's not the queen anymore right nope so if she's not the queen then why is she still kind of like living in the same place and shouldn't she be like on the run or something like that no, because the, so essentially alfarazan took over under the premise that the eagles blessed it therefore the gods did mm -hmm. okay now if you're alfarazan and you're saying I told people that God said I rule. Okay. Um, if he if you start doing all the stuff that he was doing, burning down temples, firing all the people from the government who likes her and all that jazz, don't you think that if you did anything to her, you would give the people a reason to rebel? But it seems like he's given them enough reason already. I mean, um, he's, he's forcing all of the Navy out of service. You know, he's basically getting not all, the, oh, <laughs> not well, all. <laughs> well, anyone who likes Muriel or uh -huh. like, is loyal or whatever, they all got to go. Then he went into the temple, not only spilled blood in the temple, but also broke the 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 uh, the little um, the statue, oh, yeah. the statue lady. So yeah. this is stuff that. It seems like would definitely turn folks against you. And if it's not, then that means that maybe Muriel should be scared too. All right. So, you know how I hate getting political, but we are talking at least fictitious politics. Yeah, we're right? talking about, yeah, we're talking about politics. I'm going to take you all the way back to 2003. All right. Every despot knows that if you open with essentially criminalizing everyone at once, they're going to rebel. Okay. Um, however, if you pass the Patriot Act and then increase police and build cop cities and do um stop and frisks if you do a little bit here little bit there you know it's the frog in the boiling pot gotcha because people will be like man i don't agree with this but this should be as far as it goes right because <laughs> from my from my perspective the second everything that went on in the temple went on that should have been kind of like a tipping point of like hey Farazan you're going to you're going too far we the people don't like this you got to chill because that's well, the, like he said this is the last place for people to pray and yeah. he just basically just kicked that sand castle over and but notice he didn't open with that yeah 
And see, we, since this is TV time, this isn't all happening in one day. It seems right. like it, but it's not. Right. And that's the whole thing. It's little bitty things. You start by outlawing Jordans. <laughs> you know? Matter of fact, you start by outlawing black Jordans. You know? Because of gang activity. Two years later, everybody's in school uniforms. Feel me? Yeah. Oh, also... <sighs> Maybe, maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking a little too hard on this, but Muriel and Ellen Dill, mm -hmm. did they get together? Because I mean, she put her hand on his chest two times, all right? I don't. And when a lady remember. be rubbing down your chest, I'm just saying. You know, I don't remember, but what I do know, okay, what I do know is remember in the beginning of the trilogy. What uh, uh, Lord of the Rings? Yep. All right. And they're fighting Sauron, and the king was struck down. Uh huh. That was Arendel. Arendel gets struck down. Sauron steps on Narsil, and then Isildur picks up the sword and cuts off Sauron's fingers. That's who we're looking at right now. Oh, okay, okay. So. Arendel will be king. I just don't remember how he gets there. I will by next episode. <laughs> but, um, yeah, because we only have, what, three, two episodes left? Three episodes left. I, oh, it's not so, that. I was just going to look it up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we have three left because there's uh, eight episodes, I believe, in this season. So mm -hmm. we got three episodes left. So it's one thing I do love about these short seasons is that there really isn't a lot of room to play around. Like they, you know, they get straight to it. Sword and, cuts both ways, brother. <laughs> uh, well, in this case, for this show, it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Um, I do, I do understand that there's a place for, say, like network television where you still have like the, was it like 24 to 26 episodes, something like that. Uh, but those were the days. But that's, it, it, it just seems like unless you, hmm, for serialized storytelling, unless you are breaking up your season into arcs, a la anime something like that it ends up dragging out and having a lot of filler kind of episode -y content well i often say there's no correction like an overcorrection <laughs> i personally think that 13 episodes is perfect yeah i like the i like when fx was doing the 10 episode thing mm -hmm. or um for the one season of agents of shield that i do like I do like having, say, 22, 24, 26 episodes, whatever it is, and then breaking those 26 episodes into three separate stories. So it's like, so it's basically like you're getting, you're kind of getting three of these short eight episode seasons. So the idea doesn't really get stale because it's like, okay, we kind of close this chapter. This is chapter two kind of of this season in chapter three of this season and the season i'm talking about with agents of shield is the only season worth watching which is the season with the ghost rider in it so <laughs> i know people are going to fight me on that one but yeah you were about to get lit up bro. let's be honest <laughs> let's be honest guys the season with ghost rider the ghost rider slash lmd season because that was it was broken into those two. It was Ghost Rider, then you had the LMD issue, and then at the very end of that, Ghost Rider comes back and helps them deal with the LMD issue sort of tangentially, and then it's over. Um, every other season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., because I covered it, it, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. I'm I, I didn't hate it, it, but it, I didn't hate it, but it was, it was a struggle. I, I'm going to take your word for it, because I didn't watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh... <sighs> But um, here, I think I think that's all the questions I have for this episode right now. Oh no, one last question. Um, mm -hmm. Adar and Galadriel. Yo, <laughs> I like it. I, I like, like it. it a lot. I'm I like, yeah, y'all do have a common enemy. I like it a lot. And since 
is is there any writings on the book side of elves and orcs working together at all? No. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> um a lot um so there's this discourse online going on about whether or not we should make our bad guys three dimensional. Okay. Um and it's one you know how I don't really keep up with online discourse, but this is one that I'm kind of I'm kind of interested in because Lord of the Rings and Star Wars are very basic in their storytelling in the sense of good guys win, bad guys lose. <laughs> and as ever, England prevails. Uh <laughs> but yeah, good uh if you know, you know. But yeah, so good guys are good guys, bad guys are bad guys, and there's no nuance. There is straight yeah, up it, no nuance. You either good or you bad. You light or you shadow. That's it. Your light side, your dark side. Um, now I get how with the ever expanding lore of a franchise that's over 60 years old now. Um, people start asking questions. Now, I personally am only of the mind of go ahead and ask those questions if the creators are still alive okay mm -hmm. that, that that's a big thing like you know um i'm not a big fan of dark side light side jedi but let's see the dark side's point of view not shut up I, i'm not into that <laughs> um vader bad yoda good move on all right, but then I'm old and I might just be an old man yelling at clouds. Um, and with Lord of the Rings, it was always elves are good, orcs are bad, shut up and shut up and enjoy the book. So an alliance between elves and orcs and stuff. No, orcs were the bad guys. They were the bad guys. Um, Melkor, the bad guy. He create the orcs. And then he gets thrown into the shadow at the end of the first stage then sauron comes up as the new dark lord and he uses the orcs you don't go into do the orcs have kids do they have a daily life you know you don't go hey this is dabu um um not even orc lord but orc spearman number 25 wakes up in the morning has some raw meat and does the sutoku before having to go off to do his pt drills no it's not what you get with lord of the rings <laughs> All right, you can have that all day with Warcraft because Warcraft decides. But wow. orcs are bad, elves are good. That's it. Humans complicated, easily corruptible. Okay, we can look into them for nuance. You know. Okay, okay. Because one thing I did like about this season was in the first episode where we, I, well, at least I was, you know, brought into the knowledge that oh. So orcs weren't down with Sauron in the beginning. Like it, orcs go with who the strongest. Oh. <laughs> because he was like, hey guys, look, you know what I'm saying? I'm Sauron. I'm here to I'm here to be in charge and everything's gonna be all good. Some of y'all gonna die, but it's gonna be all right. And they were like, nope. And then they <laughs> straight they straight beat him up. They they only they, some. They straight kill him. And only some. Cause uh, I didn't Adar. see nobody trying to help him out. Adar, the dark elf, not quite an orc yet, um, says, nah, I'm going to take you out and take it off of myself. And the orcs are like, all right, we're, we're following him. All right. Now, when it comes to the dark elves, is my understanding correct that the first orcs were dark elves, right? Uh, the, uh, no, dark elf is a stop on the way to being made an Essentially, okay, so, Melkor took the elves, uh huh, tortured and twisted them until they became dark elves. Then okay. he did it some more and they became orcs. Okay, cool. All right. So he's like halfway there, but he's not a fool. All right, cool. Right. He hasn't gone mad. All right. So with that knowledge, is it more. I guess is it more believable or or is it is it more i guess 
feasible? Uh, yeah, feasible. Yeah. Is it more feasible no. that Galadriel could work with Adar because he um, is an elf? Okay, so with Galadriel, kinda. Because see, here's the thing. Um, and I can tell you, this is probably the reason that they decided to make Galadriel the main character. Galadriel was always a little sus. Seriously. I, she doesn't seem sus to me. She just seems like she's got those blinders on. It's like she wants someone's blood and that's it. Well, that's the thing. All right. Her blinders are the things that make her sus to elves. Oh, okay, okay. All right, elves so, are like, see, we know you got a good of, when heart. I think of the term sus, I think of someone who's like kind of like shady, kind of like corrupt. And I don't really see her as shady or corrupt. No, she's corruptible. Mm, okay because right. she's single-minded got you got okay. you all right Good and point. that's what elrond is like dude no no you need to get that you need to put that ring down of like everybody needs to put these rings down but especially you like you gotta put this down <laughs> <laughs> you of all see, people you get an idea in your head and you just don't let that you don't let it go yeah, because she was supposed to go to Valar in the beginning of the show. Yeah. He was like, bro, you were on the boat to heaven. Yeah, when we meet her, she's dragging some kind of, you know, search party all into the coldest depths of the, I don't know, cold mountain, whatever they call it. Yeah, <laughs> to revenge her dead brother. Okay. So from the or from the L's point of view, specifically, um, specifically Elrond. Elrond is like, yo. You were done. You were literally on the train to heaven. And you jumped off to come and get revenge on the dude that killed your brother. We don't do that, bruh. <laughs> You're on the stairway to heaven. You know, you literally gave up eternal paradise specifically for revenge. What is up with you, girl? And now she's got this ring that was made by the dude whose whole M.O. is corruption. Because right. see, Sauron okay. doesn't just like, he doesn't just come up and punch you in the face. He talks at you. He influences you just a little bit at a time. Look at what he did with Celebrimbor. Yeah. It's like, hey, look, we're celebrating. Isn't that nice? Yeah, but I'm concerned about people. So you want to make rings for the people. That's what you're trying to say. I'm just it, saying I'm see, concerned. I like, I like their back and forth because it's Killer Brimbor is not a dumb man, but I think his maybe hubris and thinking that he can I, I think Killer Brimbor knows he's playing with fire, but believes that since I have this in a burn can and there's rocks around it and I've, exactly. got, the little, I've got the little grate on top of the burn can, there is no way a forest fire can happen. Exactly. That's exactly it. And he's even like, oh, no, I know you, Eddie. I know you're trying to make it look like it was my idea to make these rings of men and Sauron's like, no, 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 you're right. You're right. So you're saying no? Yeah, all right. By the way, I found out what was wrong with the other ring. Wait, what are you saying? Well, you know, we we messed up. Cause, you know, um, so we made the, you know, when we made the rings for the elves, we had pure intention and all that stuff. When we made the ones for the dwarves, we was lying. You know, lies. <laughs> and it'd be a real shame if Gilgalad found out that not only did you make rings out of lies, but that you messed it up too? But I get it. I get it. I get it. I, I get that you're done and all that stuff. So I'll just do it myself. Oh, look, I can't get it right. <laughs> yeah, he I am going that to weaponize my incompetence. Yeah, he screwed that up on purpose. Exactly. So um, I, I guess lastly, I'll ask when when it comes to Celebrimbor and where you see because we have three episodes left do you think Celebrimbor because I can't remember 
how fast we're expecting to do this but do you think kevin brimbor ends up making the the human rings or the rings for men by the end of this season end of the season probably okay all we're right probably gonna see him make the rings of men um and the next season um we're gonna see sauron head on in to mordor and in the mount doom and um start working on the one ring while we start looking at the effects of what the corruption of the rings actually do that's that's what i'm seeing okay well then i'll throw it to you uh you know what i'm saying we've been out here thank you thank you so much for you know at least clarifying some things for me uh solar give me some final thoughts where can they find you final thoughts i can't wait to the next episode i am i am digging what i'm seeing yes. and um you know you guys can find me in a number of places such as the solar gray youtube channel um you can also find me at twitch.tv slash bid underscore p um trying to get the day job schedule back down so that i can um actually start live casting again because i miss it and i miss I, I miss my chat i miss my people man i miss my people yeah i haven't gone live in a long time it's people we can't i'm coming back just i still got some things i gotta get together but we coming yeah, back. yeah we we working on it we working on it and of course um you can always send me an email at back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k at gmail.com and um yes um but the fastest and most efficient way to tell me something that you want to make sure I hear is to leave a comment if you're a subscriber here at NERD SOUL. Just saying. Because, you know, I'll, I'll be like, hey, somebody left a comment for me. I think <laughs> I will talk to them. <laughs> oh, man. All right, cool. Uh, for me, hey, if you're not watching Rings of Power and you like Lord of Rings at all, then I'd say give it a shot. If you've given it a shot, you don't like it, I understand. But if if you're this is your first time hearing anything about Rings of Power, you're on this episode, this is your first time, I'd say it's worth going back and watching the first season. Even though the first season is slower than now, it definitely it, it kind of gets the veggies out the way. So now you can have, you know, you can have your your cake. Uh but uh, with that said, N-E-R-D, S-O-U-L, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, podcast, all that jazz. Until the next time that you have to make sure that you protect your emotional and mental stability from Sauron. We're just saying peace. Later, guys. <laughs>